My name is Marco Salazar. I had uh, a very good upbringing, I had very wonderful parents, and they did uh, instill in us a lot of good morals and values as kids growing up. And they invested a lot in myself, my brother, my younger sister. Uh, they put us to private school, you know, we went to church, and uh, really strong into our, into our books and studies. Uh, but I always had that art. I always drew as a, as a kid uh, cartoons and Popeye and Superman and Batman. And I used to always draw the comic books. And my mother, like I said, my mother, she really uh, uh, focused on, on my talent as, at a young age. So she nurtured me by buying me my art supplies and buying me my comic books and all these little how-to drawing books. And, and so I trained myself, well, like, like just entertain myself with, through art as a young kid, you know. So I was very fascinated by animation, by comics. All that was nurtured at home, all that was nurtured by the community, and all of that was nurtured also by what I was exposed to as far as like like programming and, and TV shows and things like that, you know. Then when I got into high school, then the actual graffiti movement was well on its way. And that's when I was just overwhelmed by the culture of hip hop. We're celebrating 50 years of hip hop this year. There was the breakers, there was, I had friends who were break dancers, I had other friends that were DJs, and I had other friends that were rappers and lyricists, and I fell into that whole genre of graffiti art. I was in junior high, barely in high school, and I was getting commission walls to do sides of hardware stores, and so we would we would go and, and, and paint these walls and, and uh, get street cred. I came up in, uh, here in East Chicago in the early 80s, we got a bad rap in the way because these gang members are tagging up their, the neighborhood and putting up their areas and marking their territory. And to the lay person at the time, they were the same in one, you know. And us as graffiti artists, as young urban artists, to be stigmatized as a gang member and being frowned upon instead of it being, you know, worked with as a youth, um, there, we ran into a lot of issues when we were young, but the art, art saved my life. I would say that absolutely art saved my life. The art, the movement, the culture, and especially where we're at and representing that for our region. I've been involved in many movements because of an artist, because I'm an artist, using my artwork as a vehicle to convey messages of social justice, of cultural identity. I've happened to move to different parts of the country and I've always managed to come back home because this is where I am and this is where I belong. I get motivated, I get inspired by seeing the things that we, we tried to get across when we were younger and seeing it now. To give you an example, my graffiti art, when we started it, it was frowned upon, you know? But now it's a folk art. It's an American folk art, and it's, it's as American as apple pie and rock and roll and jazz, you know? And you go anywhere around this globe, and you will see graffiti art that was born and raised here in the United States, in metropolitan urban cities, like Chicago, New York, LA. That's where graffiti was born. And to know that we were part of that movement, back in the early 80s, man, and, and, and stuck with it. You know, a lot of people, you know, kind of frowned upon it. Oh, you're trying to make this place look like New York and, you know, this and this and that, but they don't see the cultural significance of it. The, it's worth so much. It's priceless. Glad that we were part of that, part of that movement. 